Welcome to the Lockdown Economy, a series of interviews by the think tank Alter Contacts, where the real entrepreneurs share their insights. My name is Yulia Skupchenko, and today my guest is Yup Heger, the founder of The Vocal Couch. Hello, Yup. How are you? Hey, good. Thank you very much. Where are you at the moment? Right now in my home office, um, I am on a boat that's really nice here in Amsterdam. I'm in the middle of nature, surrounded by water. It's beautiful out here. That's very lucky. I, I, feel, I feel, you know, that the boats at the moment are the best places to be. So, uh, the vocal coach. Um, the name is fairly self-explanatory, but I would like to know more. So tell me, what do you do, who you do it with, and uh, what's the business? Well, the business was founded in 2013. I founded a vocal studio in Berlin and I started out um, doing vocal exercises, vocal improvement things for singers, but fairly soon it became available to um, public speakers as well. There kind of really was nobody who, um, who offered hands-on vocal exercises for public speakers specifically, like specifically around the topics of vocal sound. How do I analyze what kind of vocal sound I need? How can I improve or change that? And that went so well that I came back to my home country of the Netherlands and founded a second studio in Amsterdam. And since then I've been working with uh, public speakers, singers, uh, people interested in vocal health, um, that sort of thing, one-on-one, -on -one, small groups, larger groups. Uh, yeah, that's the business. And do you see, uh, do you see a lot of people actually um... Uh, a lot of public speakers especially thinking that they need it so is it something that you have to educate them about or they just feel it and they just come to you well that's a good question the field of vocal research is fairly young so the knowledge that the voice is something that you can do something about or assess the value of at all is fairly new so that is a thing that i have to really educate people about it's true but uh, luckily enough, on the sideline, there's been um, research going on about how much the voice matters in terms of value creation for anything voice related, like sales, presentations, um, things like that. So there is some awareness, but it's like starting to become more mainstream. Like I do have to educate most people that I work with still, honestly. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, the TEDx and TED Talks uh, that... that uh are about um, how do you have to hold yourself on stage and how do you have to speak uh, really help in uh, sort of reaching out to, to the mass of public speakers. They're pretty, there are a lot of public speakers. I can tell from LinkedIn, almost every other person is a speaker. So there's quite a big market for you, isn't there? Yeah, it's true. And like since that whole culture kind of became a little more popular during the last 10 years, I also see a, like, uh, a bigger awareness of what a good voice can do you know and it's it's beautiful to to see that more people are getting interested yeah and so um during the lockdown uh did you feel any difference to your practice because i know that you do classes in person because i am i am one of your uh trainees and i am i must say i'm very very happy with the progress we've made i i we trained the singing right so the notes I can take now is incredible. Uh, but on the other side, so if you do one-on-ones in person, um, was it possible during the lockdown? What did you do differently? Well, due to situations in my family, I wanted to be extra secure. So I just shut down the studio immediately. Online lessons were available, but they were only available for speaking because in singing, as you know, it's it's pretty important for me to be with you with the music with the client and that was not possible because we don't really notice it so much right now in this interview but we do have a delay we do have a delay of about um, half a second and that is way too much for accurate singing so that's something that wasn't available for my clients unfortunately for uh, yeah most part of those three months that the studio was closed it's opened up now again though um, but ma the main thing that I did was online. So online one-on-one -on -one coaching in, uh, in the public speaking and vocal health topics. And, did continue. and how did you, uh, thank you. And how, um, 
uh, did uh, the lockdown itself affected you? Because of course you you had to stop part of your business and the other part was a little bit you know in the air. I'm sure that the speakers were a bit less uh, likely to to go and practice because they had other issues on their plate. Or what was the situation? What was your feeling? Well, my feeling was really twofold. Around the singing and vocal health, there was a massive insecurity around uh, with clients around the topic of of spreading, really, because there were these these signs that the singing could be a um, kind of super spreader, right? Like much worse than speaking. Luckily, that's been um, downgraded. So we know now that singing is about the same in terms of risk as um, as speaking. But in the beginning, that was not really the case. And uh, being a singer also myself, um, it was, yeah, that was getting, it, it was giving some sort of uncertainty, yeah, personally. However, on the other hand, I was able to assist many speakers with this very thing that we're doing right now. So online speaking, you know, it's, it's for many people, it was a massive challenge. They, I got messages from like old and new clients being like, Hey, I, I experienced so much more pressure on my voice and can we do something about that? So for me as a professional, I dove much more into vocal health as a topic than before. And I learned a lot. So that's great. Okay, so you had to a little bit uh, redirect your uh, focus from uh, in-person singing and in-person public speaking to online, to vocal health, because, yeah, it is something that I've heard as well, that people uh, have been on conference calls uh, all day long, and at the end of the day, they just don't have the vocal cords enough to speak. Um, so, um, how um, how did your business... Um, in, if you look at the business uh, as it was going uh, before January, in terms of number of clients, number of uh, uh, sales, so to say, and if you look at it from January onwards, uh, did it change a lot or it balanced out? Well, it did change a lot. I went from doing workshops with um, 10 to 30 people to doing none of those because of the risk, right? So that... <laughs> that just entirely stopped and people are still reluctant to organize things like that. So that was a massive and, shift. Yeah. So it was a, a big shift from doing group activity and one-on-one -on -one coaching to kind of going back all the way to almost exclusively doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah. And, uh, and do you think um, in the next maybe week, maybe month, uh, people will resume uh, group uh, group sessions uh, group workshops well i have some requests coming in so i do feel that people are confident that you know things that include many people or multiple people at all in one room can now take place again in the physical world rather than the online world yeah and uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, competition that you experienced during the lockdown was it more than usual because um, uh, online world has become overpopulated with all sorts of offering. Maybe you've experienced that as well. So, what was your um, what was your strategy? How did you deal with it? Well, I rapidly dropped singing <laughs> for the time being. You know, I was like, I can open the studio once once it's back in. A lot of what sets me apart as a um, as a music coach is. Um, has to do with what we can do in a room not so much you know i have colleagues i have very 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 good colleagues who are uh, focusing much more on only um, vocal technique for singers and that is something that is possible to do online so there i was feeling the competition was raging and i had to confess that really in the online world that's not my biggest strength right i excel as a uh, in the online world i excel as a public speaking coach and that's where I experience less competition. Um, my specific expertise is not that widespread amongst the, um, the, the, yeah, the presentation and, you know, like vocal coaching world. So yeah, there I, I didn't find so, yeah, no, there was actually easier in terms of competition. Okay, so so in public speaking, I mean, it, it was it was not that overcrowded, and and that's good, of course. Um, 
but you said you you were in touch with your customers or your customers reached out to you saying that uh, they want more uh, coaching on how to speak properly so that they don't hurt themselves. Mm. Um, was there any more contact with your clients? Uh, I've heard from many entrepreneurs that they were reaching out just to just to talk, just to speak about something, not to sell necessarily. What was your experience? Uh, did you reach out to your clients? Yeah, in the first three weeks of the lockdown, I did. I reached out to my clients saying, hey, of course, the studio was closed. I work in Berlin too, part-time. You know, I will go there every now and then to keep in touch with my Berlin studio. That wasn't possible. I wasn't able, I wasn't able to go to Berlin at all. And so I reached out to them being like, hey, do you need anything? You know, like, how are you, how are you dealing with the situ situation? Are you good? Are you, um, can I be there for you as a coach? Or, you know, do you perhaps just want to tell me something? Um, so I did do that. Yeah. And it was very beautiful to see what people were sharing. And, uh, what was the, maybe the common denominator, um, around all, all your calls with the clients, something that maybe, uh, they all said to you about their condition or about the fact that you called them. A sense of human gratitude. I did feel that people get, got to you value communication as such and interhuman communication like the human level of communication a lot so lacking embracing lacking touch lacking the actual sound and feel of a human in a room people realize what that means and one thing that i did get back was that hey it's great to actually just talk to another human and be reminded of how much i value this interhuman connection yeah, that's that's a beautiful uh, that's a beautiful sentiment. And um, mm. uh, so, in the in the going further, what are your plans? What are your big plans for the next few months? I mean, you are in one of those industries which was most affected because it's con it's connected to one on one group sessions. It's singing, which, as you mentioned, was uh, falsely accused of being a mass spreader. So, how are you going to deal with all of that in the next few months? To increase the the flow of the customers well it wasn't at all a um a a lie that you know vocal action in rooms can be a super spreader um because most of these events were hosted in relatively poorly ventilated small rooms right so one of my um main objectives for the next few months will be to get the group activities like my choirs um like the workshops back on track and also indoors because in the fall of course it's going to go colder again so um you know managing you know managing spaces really like doing research where i can host workshops effectively but also healthily like uh, to, to actually in the eliminate the risk of you know spreading this virus when doing my vocal work with a uh, with people in a room yeah that's the main objective to find to learn about what that entails to learn about ventilation to learn about the other factors that a healthy room entails and also to communicate that with, with clients um and apart from that it's going to be giving space for basics to be available online anyway like the the first 15 minutes or half an hour of any one-on-one -on -one session or workshop are pretty general information that I think like not many people know but you know it's it's kind of like the, the basic of my basis of my work like the real work that I do as an as a as an entrepreneur as a as a specialist comes after that but these basic tips these this, these basic takeaways on vocal health on vocal usage on vocal improvement for both public speakers and singers are things that I want to put online. So I'm working on a, um, on a short video series that explains that, and I'm working on getting that published in an ebook. It'll take a bit longer, but still, you know, so I'm working besides the whole, uh, the whole room thing. I'm working on those things to like, kind of like give people something to work with by themselves, especially like for the people that, still are, are a bit reluctant to go outside and you know be uh, back in the public life for real 
Yeah, absolutely. I think for many, it's still challenging to to even think that they will be in a supermarket or in another place with more humans. I think there's still a bit of fear in that. But I'm happy to hear that your your main focus is health, and it's also very nice that you will be uh, sharing quite a lot, as I hear, uh, mm. uh, for free. So before the people actually come to you, or maybe not for free, I don't know. <laughs> Video series, I'm guessing that will, I don't know. We're gonna have to figure it out, right? Uh, or to find out later. Um, but um, it's gonna go uh, beyond the stretching and beyond the the. Can you tell uh, a few words maybe about what's going to be, what are the basics? Because I've been to your classes, so maybe I understand what the basics are, but for people who haven't been to your classes. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, the, basic, the basics are what do I want to do about my warming up? What's, what does warming up mean? Or rather, to take one step back, uh, what, does, what does vocal improvement entail? Like, what is changeable? And how far is my voice something that I have to just deal with and my vocal health that's some, that is something that I just, you know, that is either good or bad, you know. Um, if I experience after a long day of Zoom calls, um, like a sense of ineffectivity in my actual vocal action, in my communication, um, and a sense of a sore throat, for instance, what can I, what is, what can I do about it? Like what percentage is up for change, you know? So that's something that I want to start with and then go into the basics of uh, how do I warm up and cool down my voice? How do I kind of change the basics of my vocal sound to best um, fit my vocal need? If, you know, it can be a public speaking thing online, offline, or, you know, like singing a song, really. Um, and then go into the basics about how to implement that into material, like um like the presentation how to actually or, how to, how to actually use it in yeah, how, how to, to implement those it. techniques yeah because i'm seeing a lot of colleagues do similar things online but i'm missing that last link or rather i'm missing the first and the last link so um as a as a total in, like an individual who doesn't know anything about the voice like knowing what vocal work actually is and what it means right what you can change and how you can do that um that's a link that i'm missing and the other link that i'm missing is how can i implement that easily you know, and I'm not going into great depth about that because that's what my main work is about, and I want this to be a free series, right? But it's going to be, it's going to be, yeah, inclusive enough that all the basics will be there, so, um, so that vocal users out there can can start working, you know, and you know, for most people that's actually going to be enough, you know, uh, I think I'm guessing. You will see because uh, maybe that will be just the right. Uh the right piece, uh, the right step uh, between, you know, them thinking about what to do with their voice and then thinking, I need a vocal coach and I need that vocal coach. So maybe that will be, that will be the majority of cases. Yeah, I'm hoping that, of course, um, people will get their sense of, you know, get educated about that the voice is something that you can change and that Professionals like myself are available for one-on-one -on -one or group support, of course. Yeah, so I am hoping that people will know what reaching out to a vocal coach means. Yeah, and what they can get from it, surely, because uh, uh, because to be able to know how to use your voice is is quite a joy, and I highly recommend. Personally, I highly recommend you, of course, because he's my vocal coach as well. Um, so thank you very much you, for sharing your story. It was uh, it was quite interesting to hear about um, a very unusual uh, unusual profession. Yeah, thank you very much, Ilya, for uh, for hosting this and uh, have fun using your own voice in these presentations and in your singing. Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you to everyone who joined us today. If you want to contact you or look up his uh, video sessions, they will probably be in the uh, description below the video. I want to invite you to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and do leave some comments if you like it or if there's something else you want to know. In the next, next few weeks, we will have many more insights to share with you. So stay tuned and bye.